Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here from Social Flight with another key building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that might seem a little old school. It's gonna be radio navigation, specifically, VORs, localizers, glide slopes, everything that you need to use radio navigation for IFR or even in some cases VFR flight. Now, the first thing that might be crossing your mind there is why? Why in this modern era of GPS navigation would we be thinking about radio navigation for our Titan T51 Mustang? The answer might surprise you. If you go to the FAA's website and you do a search on GPS outages, you will find that they have a prediction tool and a reporting tool on GPS interference that occurs on a regular basis around the country. In addition to that, if you check out a service, there's an organization called GPS outage.org go check out uh, those guys you can take a look and on any random day see that it's surprisingly common that there will be some major gps outages happening around the country in fact they can be so serious that back in october of 2022 there was a gps outage around dallas fort worth airport and that actually caused a significant amount of rerouting of aircraft that couldn't land that were using actually GPS navigation that was actually out at the time around that Dallas Fort Worth airport. So this is very common. And if you fly IFR, uh, or again, if you're using VFR for navigation across long distances, you really rely on it, you really should consider the possibility that going with your old standby up from the past of radio navigation with VOR, ILS, glide slope, et cetera, can actually save you. So it's quite a, uh, important to us where we're gonna be traveling around the country. You can see the avionics lit up behind me here on the Mustang. If we're gonna be traveling around the country doing IFR, it's important that you have the ability to continue radio navigation. And that's one of the reasons that it exists and still exists today even with so much going on with modern GPS navigation. So let's talk for a minute about how this works. Well, if you've ever seen one of those VOR stations on the ground, they look like kind of a milk bottle sticking up with some uh, white circles or dots going all the way around it. Well, the way that this works is it sends out essentially uh, it's on one frequency but two signals. One of them is, is, is a guide frequency. It's a standard frequency that doesn't vary, that is its reference, called the reference frequency. And this is a sinusoidal wave that comes out on the frequency of the VOR and just is, and then as you go around 360 degrees from that point, there is a variable portion to that signal. That is, if you know anything about how waves work and how radio frequency works, it's out of phase. So essentially you have one reference frequency and depending on where you are, you have that second uh, actual wave and then you compare the two, you know where you are going around. All of this is done inside your VOR navigation and it's a very similar concept to what is done with left-right navigation on a localizer and on a glide slope when actually using it for uh, instrument approaches as well. So that's the basics of kind of how it works on a technical level. Well, for us and for many folks out there, to do this, it all starts, and use it on your aircraft, it all starts with the antenna. And we are going to be installing these blade antennas from Comant. And these are our wonderful uh, antennas. These are CI-120 antennas. You, there'll be two of them, one on each side of the aircraft. Um, they're very aerodynamic. We don't have to worry about them slowing us down or anything like that. Uh, if they're on the outside of the aircraft. And so you may see what are either whisker antennas on some aircraft, one on each side of the tail, or again, a couple of these nav blades, if you have a really cool modern setup like we're gonna have uh, to actually capture that. And you have them on either side of the aircraft to make sure that if the aircraft is at an angle or the fuselage uh, or any other surface is blocking part of it, you, have, uh, equal, you can receive that from either side of the aircraft. So 
It all starts with the antenna. That's what we're going to be using. The next piece of equipment that you need is something called a power combiner. This, in this case, we're using a CI120-5 power combiner. This is the unit right here, just so that you can actually see that. And this particular one uh, allows you to do a few different things. First of all, this is where the two antennas come in, one, two, and get combined, as it were, through the power combiner, and then go out to a radio. Now on this particular unit that we have, the 120-5, it actually has two outputs for two different receivers. So if you have two nav radios in an aircraft, this will output to both and combine both antennas. Now, one of the things we were, we were still debating a little bit, we were gonna put this on the tail just below the horizontal stabilizer. If we do that, these cables that come with this power combiner and with the antenna set up from Comet will work fine. It is possible, I think, what we're go the direction we're going in now is that we may actually bury these in the fiberglass wing tips. So they're really completely hidden, uh, don't have to deal with any abrasion issues whatsoever, uh, and kind of keep the look of the aircraft. And so there's a good chance we go with that. If we do decide to do that when we build out our wings, then what we need to do is each of these uh, and cables will be replaced with one that goes the entire length out to the wingtip. But it's very important that they are of equal length, exactly equal length. So we will be doing that to make sure that the power combiner works properly and making sure that it all works. And then this unit will actually go behind the panel uh, so that it can perform that function. Now that's great uh, and uh, that will take care of most of what we need to do in that case. But let's talk about frequencies for a minute because I've mentioned that these antennas are our nav antennas and they handle a bunch of different things. They do VOR, they do localizer, they do glide slope. That's a lot of different things. Well, how that works is that they're broken up on different frequency ranges. VOR and localizer, which are your lateral navigation aids, those are done in the frequencies of 108 to 118 megahertz. And that's what you can just dial in on your radio. You tune to the VOR or the localizer by putting in the frequency. It's gonna be between 108 and 118. And that's all what you need to do there. Glide slope is different. Glide slope is dedicated on a much different frequency. It's around 330 megahertz. And all of this is coming into one thing. Well, if you look at the back of any of your avionics, if you go to install them, you'll find that you actually have two different antenna inputs. One for VOR slash localizer, that 108 to 118 range, and a different one for glide slope. So how do we accomplish all that? Well, another unit, which is also available here from Comet, is this CI-507 Diplexer. Now, the purpose of a Diplexer is it actually takes all of the uh, data, all of the signal that's coming in over that, uh, this wide frequency range, and it splits it. So it will actually have an input here. There is one input, which is your antenna, and two outputs for it. One of the outputs is your VOR slash localizer, and the other is your glide slope. And so it essentially splits it, sending the 108 to 118 to your VOR slash localizer input and sending the roughly 330 megahertz range, it's a, it's a little wider spread, but the roughly 330 megahertz range into your glide slope. So at the end of the day, what we need to do is wire in the antennas, Get the antennas using just uh, your standard uh, 232 type cable that will come in and uh, actually uh, go, that's your coax cable uh, that will come in and then go first to the power combiner, from the power combiner out of that and then into the diplexer which will split it between the radios. So hopefully that gives you some little bits of information. I would again very much encourage you to go and take a look at both the FAA's website at gpsoutage.org. Go take a look at what's going on around the country even the day that you're watching this and see what GPS outages exist. Because again even when I pull it up on a random day you see outages in Texas. I saw outages happening 
in Mississippi, in Oklahoma. And so it's more common than you might think, and it can uh, really set off uh, your ability to use GPS. And keep in mind, if the uh, something like your, only, your autopilot only operates off a GPS signal, then you're going into a mode on that that will also only allow you to just keep the wings level because you won't be able to follow a course. So that's the reason that we're including radio navigation in our Titan T51D Mustang. Hopefully that gives you some a uh, little bit of a primer and some good information to go on. We're going to get to work, install these boxes in the plane, and uh, get those antennas mounted as well. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. We have tens of thousands of aviation events, destinations, so many things going on. We've got WINGS courses as well as AMT and IA renewal courses in Social Flight's FAA Learning Center. And we've got the Fly to Win Challenge, where you can win prizes. We've given away so many things. We gave away an Aspen E5 electronic flight instrument worth so, I think it was like $6,000 that we gave away in that. We've got uh, Lightspeed Zulu 3 headsets. We've got all sorts of prizes that we continually give away. It's all free. You just have to check in at your local airport. And of course, we're here to support you and everything to keep people flying in general aviation. Until next time, I wish you all blue skies.